Okay, so yes, with us today is Dr. Virginia Stormer. So she is the Assistant Director um, for Curriculum Development and Design. And so Dr. Stormer serves as the Associate Director for Curriculum Development and Design. And in this role, she manages and oversees areas of campus need related to course-based assessment, large classroom teaching, experiential learning, service learning, positive psychology, well-being, pedagogy, and active learning and engaged teaching. And so Dr. Soma earned her doctorate in English literature at the University of Tennessee, focusing on medieval and Renaissance drama. And so today's presentation um, will be providing scholars with an overview of the fundamentals of poster design, and then collectively working to apply those fundamentals to sample posters so that you all live here with the knowledge and confidence in your presentation skills and um, with the knowledge of what it takes to make a successful research poster. So Dr. Stomer, take it away. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, could you let, give me the ability to share my screen? Oh, yes. Um, all right, let's see if that works. Yeah, I'm good now. So thank you, Sandra. Thank you for that introduction. And, and hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Um, as Sandra mentioned, I work in um, teaching and learning innovation, which is our um, faculty support units. So I mostly work with faculty now. I used to work with students um, in, in many of my previous roles, and so I always enjoy getting to work with students. Now, let me ask, are you all seeing the PowerPoint, or are you seeing my sort of presenter view? Are you seeing just the regular PowerPoint? Sandra, can I get like a thumbs up? Or yeah, a thumbs yeah up? the PowerPoint, okay. yes. Okay. I have two monitors, and they, they it often tries to switch on me and show people the the presenter view, which is a little, a little harder to, to view. So i um, really excited to be here today. Um, poster making has, has become one of my favorite things to talk about and really enjoy all the opportunities to share research on our campus and in other uh, conferences and, and um, opportunities off campus. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do today is go over some of the general parameters around poster making, how to do it, what you should do. But I find what's most useful uh, for students is to look at actual posters once you have some of those ideas and think about, okay, what's working and what's not. Um, and that way you can think about how you want to apply some of those design principles to what you do when you make your poster. So the first, so I'll say the first little bit is going to be a lot of me talking and saying things to you. Um, so it's going to be the less fun part of today. And then the second part, we'll look at examples of posters and talk through critiques. And that's where I'm hoping you all will jump in um, and kind of run most of the show. So I always like to start with the basics. Um, so for if you're absolutely brand new to poster making, you've never done it before, um, the first place you're likely going to start is Microsoft PowerPoint. I would say that 90% of posters that students make are made in Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, if you are in a discipline like um, art or architecture, or I think some engineers use some of um, these other platforms for poster making. Um, you might use Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, or InDesign. Um, again, those are slightly more sophisticated, usually require a license. Um, in PowerPoint technically requires a license too, but I think most of us assume at this point, most people have a, a PowerPoint license. Um, but those you can use to make posters as well. What I used to always tell my students when I worked with students who were making posters, I said, if you're familiar with that technology, you can use it. Just don't come ask me questions about it because I am not. Um, and so especially for those of you who are brand new to poster making, um, I highly recommend starting in Microsoft PowerPoint. And so what you do is you essentially design your poster on a single slide in Microsoft PowerPoint. And you can, but obviously you don't want it to be an eight, print out as an eight and a half by 11. Um, you want to print it out poster size. And so what you want to make sure that you do is reset the size of the slide to a 36 by 42 or a 42 by 36. That's the standard size for UT 
um, poster presentation. So if you're doing Eureka or Discovery Day, that's the size. One of the things I always say about anything I say is always check with um, whatever conference or organization you're presenting with, because sometimes those parameters can be a little different. I think one of the main reasons that UT uses these particular dimensions is it's um, it's the biggest that our print printers can print. So um, that my, my assumption is, is that's why they use those those dimensions. But you can go into any PowerPoint and choose design. Um, and then choose the slide size and create a custom size. And you can enter these dimensions, whether you want it vertical or, or horizontal. Um, you can also go to page, page setup is another place that you can get to it. If even that feels a little overwhelming, one of the great things about the University of Tennessee is they have created UT templates for any conference that you can use. Um, let me see, I'm going to try to show you what these look like. Do a new share. Let me not open it up. Hang on just a second. For some reason, it's not wanting me to open these. I'll try, I'm gonna try to pull the links a little bit later to show these to you all. Um, but UT does have PowerPoints slides that are pre-made for you so that you can go in and instead of having to do the whole setup in PowerPoint, you can just plug in your information. That tends to be um, a little bit easier. Let me see if I can find this just in case. Okay, here we go. Let me do a new share. Now I've got it pulled up. Okay. So these files, and I'll, um, it may be that my links are not correct, but so I've pulled the, pulled this up. Can you guys see this new, um, this new PowerPoint slide? Yes. So what you can see here is that there are three slides. That doesn't mean you're building your poster across three slides. What it means is that you have the option for a two column, a three column, or a four column poster. Um, so you choose one of those and then you can see it's already got things sized for your title, your subtitle, um, your other subtitles, and then you can put in your text and your information. If you are going to an external conference and representing the University of Tennessee, you should use these. You shouldn't design your own poster um, because you want to make sure that when you're presenting and representing the University of Tennessee, what you're using is on brand. So you're using the official university colors, you're using the official university logo. Um, and so these are all done for you. And so for internal conferences and internal um, things, I, I think it's okay to, to create your own. It can be kind of a really fun, cool experience. But when you are representing the university externally, it's important to use the officially branded materials. And that's true. That'll be true um, if you go on to graduate school, if you get a job with a professional organization, you'll always want to use whatever the officially branded templates are um, for, for that organization. It's, it's kind of fun. If, you, if you're you looking at graduate schools, you can do a Google search for, you know, different schools, um, PowerPoints, and, and see what the, see what they look like. But so these are there for you. They're on the um, Undergraduate Research and um, Fellowships uh, Eureka site. So you can find those. Again, I'll update those links in my PowerPoint and can, can share those with you all after the presentation. Okay. 
So again, getting your poster set up in PowerPoint, easiest way to start things out. Once you've got it set up, you want to think about size. One of the things I always tell students is that remember, remember that with a poster, most of the time people are going to be standing maybe about five or so feet away from your poster. And so it's really important that your poster be readable from that distance. And so you want to make sure that your, your headings and your titles are big enough that people can read from a distance. And so thinking about, about 80 to 120 point font for your title, 48 to 68 for subheadings and 32 to 42 for your, for your text. And so when you're creating those titles, one of the things you also want to make sure to do is include or use generic and easy to follow subheadings. So what do I mean by that? If you are um, in the social sciences or the natural sciences, you want to have an introduction, a methods, a results, conclusion, discussion. Those are the kinds of headings that you want to use. Because if I'm coming by your poster and I think, oh, this is kind of a cool title. I wonder what method they used. I can go straight to that or, oh, that's an interesting title. I wonder what they figured out from, from this, this experiment or um, this project. I can go straight to the results section and, and find what I want. Um, so I know where to go. If you're in the humanities or pre-professional majors, you're probably not going to use the, those titles, but you want to make sure that whatever titles you use, they are, they're generic enough that people can find what they need quickly when they're looking at your poster. Um, one of the things I also always like to mention, particularly for students who are maybe looking at um, national poster competitions like um, posters on the Hill or posters at the Capitol, is when you're writing your title, in general, try not to make it too long, no matter who your audience is. But one of the things you always wanna think about too is who is my audience gonna be? If I'm going to the National Biomolecular Association Conference, my title can probably include a fair amount of jargon. If I am taking my poster to present to either state senators or um, national senators, I probably can't be too specific with my jargon <laughs> in my title because they won't understand what it means and, and then they're not going to be particularly interested, right? Um, so think about who your audience is and make sure, and, and again, this goes for all disciplines, pre-professional, humanities, um, natural sciences, arts social sciences, make sure that you think about, you know, where am I presenting this and who is my audience going to be? Um, are there judges? Are those judges going to be discipline specific? Are they going to be, uh, you know, are they going to be in, you know, 19th century poetry, or are they just going to be in the humanities, or are they going to be external people who are or just have a general interest in this? So thinking about who your audience is can be really important to what you title your poster. And again, I think too, when you're thinking about those subheadings and making sure those subheadings are generic and easy to follow, um, thinking about things that anybody can follow, even if the information underneath them is a little more technical, at least people kind of find where the information they want to see is. So this is one of my, I think, this is the hardest part about poster making, is putting the text in. Um, again, as a, as a former English teacher, <laughs> I, I know when you would tell students to write a three-page paper or a five-page paper, sometimes students would feel like they couldn't write that much um, and they couldn't quite get up to the minimum word count. Poster making is the exact opposite and I think about 10,000 times harder. Um, so for most posters, you do not want more than 900 words of text. I have seen some recommendations that it be as low as 500 to 600 words. Um, this, again, this is something that I always recommend that you talk to your mentor about because they might have 
have different ideas depending on the discipline, depending on the conference, and sometimes depending on, on the project too, right? So if you have a project that has lots of graphs and visuals, you can probably use less words, fewer words. If you have fewer graphs and visuals, you might need to use more words. So there's, there's a little bit of a give and take there. But um, if you are familiar with word counts, most people write around 300 to 350 words per page. So this is about a three page paper. And again, that's absolute max. And usually once you get to the point that you're presenting research in poster format, that research could probably be written down in at least a 20 page paper. And so to take that and then distill it down into 900 words or less, again, often less, um, is very difficult. And I think what students find to be the most difficult. And so you have to be really, really careful um, and intentional about the words that you do choose to include. And so one of the things that really helps is using bullet points instead of writing in full paragraphs. You don't need to worry about transitioning sentences and those kinds of things. Those words are not useful, right? Um, not in the terms, not in terms of a poster, at least. And if you use bullet points, um, you don't have to write in full sentences, and that can make um, your prose that can that can give you more space to include more specific information to your research. Um, think about highlighting words so that they stand out. Um, using your headings to indicate here's what the information that's coming is going to be um, so that you can, one, present your research in a way that's easy to follow. Because again, instead of having pages and paragraphs, you now have lists and highlighting and headings to tell people where to go. You don't have transitional sentences, but you have you know, the order of your list or you have words that are highlighted so they know that that's the most important thing to look at. Um, and so you have to balance your, the form, so how you're formatting your text with the amount of text that you're including. Um, and then you do where you can want to use images and graphs. One, they can stand in for a whole, you know, 10, 10 pages of information, right? If you have graphs that are showing your results, that can stand in um, for a lot of, of information. You want to make sure that whatever you use, though, is everything is clearly labeled. Because if you put something on there and you don't label it, it becomes a waste of space where you could have put some words, right? Um, so you want to make sure everything's labeled. Make sure that your graphs are really easy to read. Again, remember that people will be standing maybe a little bit further back. If they want to look at your graphs, they're probably going to come a little bit closer than maybe five feet, but um, they still need to be easy to read and easy to find the different data points on the graph. So you don't usually want to use colored backgrounds or grid lines or boxes um, so that trend lines are easier to see, those kinds of things. Um, and so you want to label all the pieces of your graphs and then make sure that you caption all of your graphs and images so that as, as the, the viewer of your poster, I can see, okay, I understand what's in this graph based on the caption, or I understand what this picture is an image of and, and how it's related to the context. One of the things that I've heard, and again, this is something again i always say ask your mentor um some people say that it should be 50 percent graphs and images 50 percent text um i've heard 60 40 both ways 60 percent text 40 percent images and then the reverse um so i've also heard 70 30 70 percent images 30 percent text um, again, that's usually going to be for the more data heavy projects where there are lots of graphs and images that can really tell the story of your research better or just as good as words can. Um, and so I, I usually think 60, 40, one way or another is a good, is a good balance. Um, but some of that will depend on your discipline, some of it will depend on your project, and some of it will depend on um, the, the place where you're presenting and what your, your mentor says you should do. 
So once you've kind of distilled everything down and figured out um, what you want to put in there, you want to think carefully about how you organize your poster. Again, this is something that in a paper, um, you know, topic sentences and or chapters in a dissertation would would do, but in your poster, you want to think about guiding your viewer through the story of your research by the way that it's organized. So one of the things to think about is reader gravity. Um, this, to be honest, this is not a term I had ever heard before I started working with research posters, um, but it's it, it's it's really kind of common sense, right? So when you are taught to read as a child, you learn, you read from the left-hand side of the page to the right-hand side of the page, you go down to the next line and then you read it. And then when you get to the bottom of the page, you go up to the top of the next page and you continue the same way. So when you're creating your poster and you're creating your columns, you wanna make sure that things are ordered from top to bottom and then left to right. So that you would have your introduction, your methods, maybe in the first column, your results, then in the second column, um, conclusion, those kinds of things. What you wouldn't want to do is have your methods or your introduction in the first column and then right next to it, your methods, right? Because that's not a natural thing to do. People are going to want to read to the bottom of that column before they come up to the next one. So reader gravity, that's your, that's your new word for the day, uh, because I'm, I'm thinking most people have not heard of it before, because again, I had never heard of it um, before, before I had started working with, with posters. But again, it's something we, we've all done since the, the first time we, we read a book, um, and probably even beforehand when we were following along while our parents were reading books to us when we were little. And so when you're thinking about your, your columns and your rows, most posters, and you saw this in this, the samples um, or the templates that UT has, most posters use a three or four column and then three or four row format. Um, again, some use a two column. Um, and again, there's a, there's a template for that with the, with the UT templates, but, but mo most are three. That is what you're going to see most of the time are three columns and then three or four rows in each of those columns. Um, posters are really fun to make and it can be kind of fun to get into PowerPoint and, and create things and make them look fun and exciting. Um, we no longer live in the 80s, try to avoid neon, okay? That is, it is not easy to read. Um, so be careful with your color schemes. Uh, make sure that they are easy to read and um, pleasing to the eye. So um, make sure that you're not using, again, sort of like a neon yellow text on a white background that, that no one might, it might look kind of cool, but no one is going to be able to read. You wanna avoid colors that are too close together so dark blue text on a sort of a medium blue background. Um, make sure that things are easy to read and easy to see. And you want to make your poster visually appealing, but you don't want the color scheme to be so intense that it distracts from the information that you're trying to present. Um, and then white space is okay. Uh, you don't want to have big blank spaces on your, your poster, but in between your columns, what we call the gutters, so in between your columns and in between your, your rows, you want to make sure there's a little bit of space. One of the things I talk about with students a lot is you don't want to feel like your poster is um, cramped. Um, there are posters sometimes I look at and I go, oh, this makes me feel claustrophobic because it feels like everything's kind of squished in there. Um, you don't want your poster to feel that way. It, you want it to look like it flows fairly easily. Um, do what you can to highlight the takeaway message. Sometimes that's the conclusion. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's the method that you use. Sometimes it's the results that you got. So think about ways that you can um, organize it in a logical fashion, but, but make sure too that you're drawing your reader to or your viewer to, to the most important part. Um, and then, of course, always make sure to include your references and acknowledgments. Those can usually go down um, towards the bottom 
uh, which is, which is nice. And they don't have to be as big because most people are not trying to read your references from five feet away. If they're really interested in what your references are, they'll come up and look at your poster a little more closely. Um, so you can kind of save room with those a little bit. And so my, the final thing that I, I always want to leave students with before we start looking at some examples is to make sure that your poster tells its story all on its own. So as you know, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you will have other workshops on how to deliver a poster presentation. Um, and that is equally import as important as your poster. However, often with poster presentations and conferences, you will have your poster up and maybe during Eureka, you have class and you can't stand next to it the whole time. Or maybe you're going to a conference and you have your poster up, but you wanna to go to a conference session. So you leave your poster, go to the, the session. You want to make sure that anyone who walks by your poster can have a complete understanding of your, your research. It might not be a full understanding, of your research with all the nuances and all the ins and outs, but it, it's complete. Um, it tells a story from beginning to end, even if they're maybe missing some of the, the highlights or again, some of the more nuanced pieces that you're gonna bring out in your presentation, which I think is really where you bring your research to life and give it some personality, right? When you're telling the story of your research, your poster still needs to tell a complete story. Um, and so that's what you wanna think about is, if I don't hear your presentation, can I still walk away with um, an understanding of what your research is and, and what it does? Okay, let's see how long did that take me. Okay, not too terribly long. Okay, that part's done now. The, the boring part is over, hopefully. Um, so what I wanna do now is I want to look at a few sample posters. Um, would love for y'all to speak out and unmute yourselves. Um, but if if you'd prefer to drop um, your thoughts in the chat, let me pull up the chat so I can see it. That's fine too. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some posters for every poster, no matter what, especially with these first couple. We're going to start with what we like about the poster and what the authors did well. And then we will move into how they might improve their posters. Okay, so here's our first poster. I always start with this one. Um, so as I said, we're gonna start with what we think this, this poster does well. Again, feel free to unmute yourself and jump in or drop your thoughts in the chat. It's uh, difficult to read all the information. Okay. So, and I can't tell who said that. Um, Benjamin, thanks for, for, for that. Yeah, we will um, we'll get to um, the, the amount of information, absolutely. And Adela, you mentioned that it's, it's very organized. So yeah, so it's got the, the titles. So it's easy to know what each section is about. Other things the poster does well. Um, it has a good amount of visuals and graphs um, throughout it. So, you know, it's not completely text. It kind of switches things up enough to make it interesting. Okay. So, um, yeah, there are, there's a, there are a lot of graphics in there. Um, so it gives you some, some visuals related to, to the research. Um, Adela added that the colors are, are, are not, too, not too harsh. What uh, the, the title's okay. a little long, but I like how it highlights the main point of the entire thing. Okay, so the title tells you what the, the research is about. Okay. All right, tell me what you think could be improved about this poster. But gentlemen, you already mentioned a um, lot of text, a lot of information. Sydney, you mentioned it could use more list information instead of paragraph. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people are not gonna stop and read this much text in a poster, it's a lot of text. Um, and again, it makes it hard to pick out what's really important 
um, when you're reading the, the full paragraphs. Other thoughts about what could be included or what could be improved? The title seems a little hard to understand for people that don't know anything about it. Okay, absolutely. Yes. Um, let's see who said that. Madison. Thank you, Madison. Um, yeah, and this is a great this is a great comment because this is sort of one of those on the edge ones, right? So this is um, MD Anderson Cancer Center, and if they're they're going to a, a conference, an oncology conference, um, this is probably maybe an okay title. It does seem a little long, and I think Benjamin, you also mentioned that. Um, but but Madison, you're right. If they are going to um, you know, some other kind of conference, maybe a more general kind of conference, um, this might be difficult for non, non-discipline um, practitioners to, to understand. Okay, and then Adela mentioned maybe minimize the amount of graphs or visuals so the reader can focus in on the main idea or result. So there are a lot, there's a, there are a lot of graphs um, there are a lot of graphs here. One of the things, um, so that's great. That's a great thing to point out, Adela. Um, one of the things you'll also notice here is that the results span really all three columns. Um, and what I would maybe recommend is to start the results in the second column, um, just so that they're kind of at the top so you can, can find it easily. Uh, because that seems to be what's most important here are the results. And that might help a little bit. Any other thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think they could okay. use margins more. Uh, there's just not enough white space. Um, so the columns, the text is like pushed right to the very edge of the columns. And so the columns are not really distinct from each other. So I think they need more white space on the poster and, and probably bigger margins. Yes, Daniel, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, this is one of those posters that I look at and I feel a little uh, claustrophobic looking at it. You'll see um, we've got these the, the two lines separating the, the columns, but there's really not a lot of space there. And so it feels um, squished, which is a really technical term we in the, the poster industry like to use. All right, any other thoughts about this one? Okay, let's go on to our next one. I like this one and this one because I think in many ways they are opposite from one another in terms of what they do well and, and, and um, what they maybe struggle with a little bit. So for this one, tell me, what do you think this one does well? And one thing I'll mention to you as you all are, are thinking about this is, um, and I think Benjamin mentioned that the, the last poster was easy to read. One of the things I will say about these is that these are screenshots that have been resized. So I don't think that the actual text on the posters was this blurry. Um, it's just that again, when you're taking something that's supposed to be printed at a 36 by 42 and then shrinking it down to your computer screens, um, it gets gets a little blurry. The good thing is, is we're not really too concerned about reading the content, um, but I did I did want to, to mention that um, because I know that, that some of this can be a little hard on hard, hard on the eyes. Okay, so parasite spillback. What does this one do well? I think you can easily tell what the research was about, even if you don't read the title. Like if you just look at one word and see the background, um, that may work to a disadvantage in other ways. But I think it's easy to see just how they've put it together, what the poster's about. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can tell, and even I think the title too, Della, that's a good point. Um, it's, it's fairly easy to figure out what the topic of the poster is. Other thoughts about this one and what, what it does well? Uh, I mean, I think it's visually pleasing. 
yeah, the background's cool. It's it's a cool background um, for the um, for the poster. And it's it's not too jarring to look at either. Yeah, yeah and Sydney, good point. It draw it draws your it catches your attention, right? Um, you see it and you think, oh, that's kind of cool looking. I want to know a little bit more about this poster. All right, well, y'all didn't have as many good things to say about this one. So so tell me what you think needs to be improved about this one. I think it needs reorganized. Okay. Say, say a little bit more, Benjamin. It, I just like feel like the flow of it's kind of bouncing all over the place. Okay. Uh, I'm not really sure where it's supposed to start at. Like it could start with my experience or what is parasite spillback. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, those are all great points. Um, it's hard to know where to start and what order to go in. Daniel, I saw that you were unmuting yourself. Did you want to add something? Yeah, I was just going to say basically the same thing that the reader gravity is not great on this one. You can almost read it like clockwise. It feels like, yeah, there's no like distinct rows and columns that kind of help the reader understand uh, the progression of the research. Yes, that's a great point, Daniel, particularly your point that there are no distinct columns. Um, there kind of sort of seems to be three columns, um, but they're not all even. Um, and it makes it unclear as to how you should read these, um, these different sections and are they in order or not. Other things that might need to be improved about this one. I don't think there's a clear like results section. Okay, yeah, there's a discussion section. There's not really a results section. Um, and it may be that the results are kind of inside of one of either the could parasites go back be a cause of data i don't know if that that graph in the middle is some sort of results um so that's that's a good point and i will say um i'm glad you got glad you brought this up because one of the other things that i love about poster presentations is that sometimes you don't have to finish your entire project to present. And so I've seen excellent posters that really only go up through the methods section because that's where the student or even the faculty member um, or the graduate student is at that moment. And they're, they're seeking feedback on the method that they've created. And so not all posters are necessarily gonna have all elements in there and posters don't have to represent a completed research project. They can also be research in progress. Now, Adela, I, th I think in this case, it is a completed research project and we might just be missing the results somehow. Um, so I'm, so I, I'm glad that you brought that up, um, both because it does seem to be missing here and because I think it's an important thing to think about as we develop posters is that posters are a really, really useful tool for presenting in progress research. So I'll mention maybe one or two more things about this one. Um, I think that the white text, so in general, white text is a little more difficult to read because again, it's not as natural to our eye as a light brachion with dark text, which is more of what we're used to. Um, when it comes to big titles and big fonts, white text tends to be okay. So you'll notice that on the UT templates, the, the title is, is white text because it's so large that, it, that it's easy to read. But when it comes to, to smaller text, white can be a little more difficult. And I think a lot of the problems of this poster could be solved by having three distinct columns with opaque backgrounds, because I also think that um, what does parasite spillback in my experience, um, and could parasite spillback be a cause of native species loss and local level extinction, fades into 
that pretty background that they have. And if you had three columns, you could still have that really pretty background, um, but you could do a darker font. And I think it would be easier to read than what we see on this particular poster. All right, so let's go to our next one. They, I, I will admit um, they get, I think, gradually better as we, we go through and this is our, our, our third one. I also try to show include posters from multiple disciplines. So those were both natural sciences, they're different type, kinds of natural science research. And this is a, a social science research project. So tell me what you like about this poster. I like uh, the different kinds of visuals, like the way they use the flow kind of chart in the background and introduction, but then they show um, in the middle section more like, I can't think of their correct, like a line chart, and then um, the different kind of chart in the results section. I think that shows a lot of different ways to see what they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you made a good point about this flow chart that's in the background and introduction. It's a great way to replace words with an image, even though it's not necessarily an image of your data, it's an image of the concepts they're using to understand this case study that they did. Um, and so again, different disciplines are going to use things in different ways. And, and this is a, a nice use of visuals to replace words and again, save some space. I think somebody else had unmuted themselves, but I didn't see who. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I thought the data, it was very well presented in the middle, like those graphs are very well organized. And, uh, and just in general, it, it's just uh, very easy to flow through and doesn't feel super crowded or jarring to look at. Okay. Yeah, so the graphs are pretty easy to follow. They're nice and big. Um, it's very clear that um, the case study is the focus that Alex, the case study is the focus of the, um, of the poster. It's fairly easy to follow. Um, so you've got good headings in here. What recommendations would you have for this poster to, to improve? The color scheme is a little clashing. I feel like. Okay. Okay. So you're not a fan of the, the color scheme. Okay. What else? I think it could use like a little bigger margins or maybe a little bit more white space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, and this really is, it's such a common issue with posters. You can see that the, um, the, the middle column, it, it's, it's really kind of getting encroached in on by those other the other two columns. Other thoughts or concerns about this one? Um, I think the labels could be bigger. And also I think the subheadings are a little bit difficult to read. I think it's just the black on that blue. The blue. Um, but if the blue was lightened a little bit, those would be easier to read from further away. Um, so I think subheadings and labels being a little bit bigger and maybe just made more legible with the colors chosen. Okay. Yeah, so maybe using that, maybe the, the lighter blue or maybe the light green that are in the graph. So it means a little bit lighter to make the black stand out a little bit more. And maybe making some of the subheadings particularly... Um, with the, maybe the titles of the graphs a little bit bigger, particularly if those are the sort of central pieces of, of the poster. All right, so you can see they're getting better, right? This one's pretty, I, I, I quite like this one. Um, again, I think, I think there's room for improvement, but um, I think hopefully you all are starting to see um, a little bit more about where these can go. Okay, so this one is from business. So, a more a more pre-professional field than what we've seen so far where we've seen natural sciences and social sciences. So tell me what you like about this one. Uh, 
Um, I think the information, the text is well organized. I like how big the subheadings are. And I like that all of it is in bullet pointed lists. So there's not any like paragraphs that you have to kind of slog through to understand. Um, it's very compact and they've kind of narrowed down the text on the poster well um, to where it looks like it might, it might be like 500 words or fewer, um, maybe like 300 or 400. Um, so yeah, there's not too much text to have to sift through here, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. So they really made use of bullet points. You're not reading through paragraphs or even full sentences for the most part. Um, the Yeah, the subheadings are big, so you can pick those out. And I will say to you that the subheadings are sort of a nice example of a different discipline outside of the sciences and what their subheadings might be that would be easy to follow. So you have the abstract, you know, what's the purpose of the research, the research objective, the background, the, the benefits and the negatives, basically the pros and the cons, right? Um, and their methods for verifying conflict free and then their recommendation, right? This is the big thing in, in business, right? It's not about, oh, we did research for the betterment of, of, of humankind and we're going to discuss it and, and think about it. It's like, okay, what should this business do as a result, right? So what is your recommendation for how to move forward as, as a business? And that's really important to um, business research, so, which is sometimes for the betterment of humankind. I shouldn't say that businesses don't, don't also work towards that. Anything else you all like about this one? I always like using this one because, because most people who come to, to, to poster presentations are, 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 in, in, are outside of the business world. And, and so they're, they're, it's usually not a favorite, even though this is one of my favorites. So tell me, what do you all think could be improved about this one? I don't think it's bad. I think you kind of just hit on it. Like I'm not used to seeing a picture like that on a poster, but I understand it in this like case. It just feels odd for me to see it on a research poster because like you said, I'm more used to the natural science kind of um, design. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so glad that you brought it up. Um, and you did it in a much kinder way than a lot of students do. They're like, I don't like that picture. I don't like the graph. They use somebody else's graph. It's not even theirs. Um, but, but this is going to be more typical of a business poster, right? They're not necessarily doing original research all the time. Sometimes they are, but they're going out and they're gathering research, um, on a particular to topic and, or applying it to a particular situation or a particular topic. Um, and so that's where you're looking at with what you're looking at with the first image. And then the second image, you know, I, I think about this as, um, really trying to draw on the attention of the, 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 the business owner to say, look, this is what people are going to see or going to think about when it comes to conflict minerals. Um, you know, what does that mean for your business? What does it mean for your brand? So it's sort of an attention getting um, image, which, you know, yes, absolutely. is not necessarily what you're doing when you're working in the, the um, in different disciplines. Other things that could be improved about this poster. I think if it was possible, they it would have been improved having uh, text in all three columns, having the text on both sides and then just the column in the middle that's just images um, isn't great for reading it. You kind of have to like skip over uh, you like read the whole left side and then you like skip over the whole middle column and then read the whole right side. So I right. think usually mixing text and images throughout all three columns would be the ideal. Okay. Okay. So better balance. You'll also notice here that these columns are also really tight. You'll see that the, the bullet points, number one, are really far away from the words. Um, and then they're really close to, at least on the right side, the, the right-hand column, the bullet points are really close to the images. And so they feel a little more squished. Um, and so the, the columns are not as, I think, distinct as they could be. 
they sort of seem to encroach in on those images. Um, it might also help that there were a little bit of space in between the rows as well. So in between each of the, the sub subtopics. All right, so we'll look at our, this is our last poster for the humanities. So we're gonna try to round everybody out. Hopefully I didn't, I think I've, I've captured most of the disciplines. So I don't wanna ever leave anybody out. Um, so this is a humanities focused poster. So tell me what you all like about this one. I appreciate that since they used more of a graphic background, they boxed in the words because I think that makes it, and with the like yellow background within the box, I think it makes it easier to read the words, um, even with a more graphic background for the poster. Okay, so yeah, so the the boxes around the different sections make it easy to find things, um, easier to locate with the the background. Other things you all like about this one? Nothing else. All right. Well, let's let's move on to what what you think could be improved about this poster. Um, I think the spaces between the boxes could all have been the same width, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a picky formatting thing, but I don't think there's really any reason why any of the spaces between the boxes should be bigger or smaller than the others. So like the most notable one would be in the middle of that uh, middle column. Um, and it kind of just hurts the symmetry of the poster. Um, so yeah, I think just symmetry in general uh, would have been a better, would have been a good like focus for the student. Yeah, Daniel, I agree. I think you need to have the same amount of space in between the boxes. Um, I personally, because I tend to like things really precisely organized, I would prefer in just to make all the columns one because the boxes aren't all the same size and that stresses me out personally. Different people have different feelings about that. Um, some people really like it. Um, that each of the boxes has their own or each, you know, subheading is fully boxed in. Um, I would prefer just straight up columns, but that's, you know, again, some of some of these are, are design choices, um, but I, I certainly agree at least, Daniel, that the space in between the boxes should all be the, the same. Other other thoughts about this poster? how we might improve it. Maybe a different background color with the black words. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And this is something too, I, you know, I think Adela made a good point that um, they made it a different color than the, the main background, just this, this cool map, I assume, of, of Spain. Um, I can't really see very well. Um, but maybe making it opaque instead of see-through might make it a little bit easier to read the black text. And you could still see, you could still see the cool map kind of in between the different boxes and up at the top. So you wouldn't lose that, but maybe making it a little more um, opaque might help. Um, some people like that you can see the map through, that it's not as, as opaque, um, that you can see the map through the back of the boxes. So again, some of these are design choices. Um, and so it's always good to ask for a second or third opinion because people might see things that you don't see. And, and some people might just have preferences and, and it can help to get a couple of opinions to, to see if, if your vision is just your own personal preference or if, if other people are seeing it in, in a different way. So I'm going to Uh, my so I'm going to stop my share there. What I, my hope is that seeing sample posters has helped you get an idea at the very least of what not to do, which I think is 50% of the battle always. Um, but are there, are there questions about anything we talked about today? Um, do you have any tips for like 
designing posters that might be really material dense or they just have they're very information dense uh subjects yeah so i mean i have a couple of tips one i think is to start by breaking things up as much as you can into separate pieces so i what i i think can be helpful is to get index cards because I'm old school, I guess you could do this on the computer too, but <laughs> write down the information that you want to put in different sections and try to break it as part apart as much as possible. Um, and think about, okay, if this one piece is 600 words right now, how can I get it down to 200? And then this other piece right now is 500 words. How can I get it down to 100? So you're not staring into the abyss of 20 pages of research and saying, how can I get this down into three pages? That can feel, again, to me, that feeling is more overwhelming than the feeling of staring at a blank Word document trying to start a paper, right? It, 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 it can produce the same kind of anxiety. And so I think the more you can break it down into pieces, the easier it is um, to make sure all those pieces still get in there. Though you may also, as you start breaking it down, you might get to an index card um, or again, maybe a, a note card on your, your computer and say, you know what, this really is not essential. People can still understand that. And that would be the other thing is I would say, do, you know, break it all down into pieces. And then every time you come to a new piece, say to yourself, can people understand my research without this piece? If the answer is yes, throw it out <laughs> um, and keep moving. Um, so that's, it's it's hard. I, I don't know that there's a super easy way, but I think those are the two ways is one, break it down into, it's, into small manageable chunks and then look at each chunk and ask yourself, can people understand my research without this? Thank you. Yeah. All right, any other questions?